What is up, y'all? It's Jimmy James 59 here, and well, 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 well. You know, a few weeks ago, I put up a video where I pointed out that the developer's latest update in the game, a little news, a little piece of news, indicated an April surprise. And as it turns out, Jim Stradamus 59 did not lead y'all astray. Over the last week or so, there's been a a lot of movement on the speculation regarding the next DLC. And ever since the April update balance preview came out, we've had screenshots from images that have been released from the new DLC, as well as an alleged image leak of the new civilizations and their attributes. And that leak is of questionable uh, val validity right here, but we'll talk about that. Now, in this video, I want you to join me. The man with the beautiful mind who sees patterns where others see only buckets of fried chicken. The greatest detective ranking somewhere between Sherlock Holmes, Columbo, and maybe that guy from Blue's Clues. We're going to tackle all these points and break down what we know and what we don't know. Now before I get started, let me just say, if you like when I do videos like this and, and you appreciate my genius level analysis and predictions. How about you subscribe to the channel so you can also check out my build orders on my tier list. To activate serious mode here for a minute, I started this channel so that I can help promote the game and help people get better at the game, and honestly, including myself, to be honest with you. And the positivity from y'all has been amazing, right? We're all in this together, trying to reach as many people as possible. You subscribing to the channel, liking the videos, you have no idea how much that actually helps get us out there, so I'd appreciate it if you do so. Okay, well right now, baller mode's been activated, and let's get after it. I want to talk about the April preview update first, right? We got our first clues about this new DLC from there. Um, at this time, right, even just a, a week or so ago, it was pretty much a little bit more of a mystery, but we were starting to see the prospect of the new expansion focusing on South Asia, particularly right the Indian subcontinent. And we saw that in the campaign folders, if you looked at the beta version, there were some campaigns that read InCam that were added. And so that set rumors abound uh, pretty, pr pretty heftily because usually the before the cam, there's a prefix that fits the region. So WE is Western Europe. Now, what's really interesting about this and what I actually haven't heard anyone discuss quite yet is to think about why the empty folders have been added to this April patch. See, this is one of these implications where you gotta ask the question, why now? If the DLC were gonna be released five to six months from now, why shove the folders in, right? And to think about this, you wanna think about the release dates of the other DLCs, so Lords of the West, now that was announced in December and it came out in January. Dawn of the Dukes, on the other hand, was announced in April, but it came out in August. So there was about a four month gap versus about a one, one and a half month gap. So given that we have had some gaps between the DLCs, we've had two that have come out with very different sort of release times, looking at it from the announcement to the time when you could actually, you know, crank that bad boy up. The fact that the campaigns have been added now and there's nothing in there. This is a suggestion, I think, that we might expect this DLC sooner rather than later. After all, what's the point, right? The, the folders may have been in there because they know that people are going to go looking for things like this. So, again, this is a... Uh, this is something where you got to think one level deeper, I think. And so my prediction, because I am the great predictor, I think we're going to see this DLC a lot sooner uh, than we will later. Now, something else that's worth noting in terms of civilization balance, there doesn't seem to be any changes at all to that. Now, again, got to think about this. Got to think in the mind here. If you were going to release a DLC soon that had a lot of changes... Why make major updates in the April patch, right? Those balance updates could come in the new DLC. So again, I think that this is more evidence that we're going to see a DLC sooner rather than later. But again, that's just my mind at work. Now, there has been a major change that was discovered in the April patch, 
regarding the siege tower and I want to go ahead and show you that in real time in the game so let's go ahead and take a look all right everybody so we are here in the scenario editor and I want you to show the tests we're going to run and I want you to see them with your own eyes so that you have a sense of the way this is actually going to look and you're not just reading it off of uh, somebody's uh, post somewhere who figured it out I want you to see it for yourself now the siege tower is a unit that enables your units to scale over walls onto the other side. So when your opponent puts up a palisade wall, right, you can be able, instead of having to take the time to bust it down, you'll be able to just hop right over it. When it comes to palisade walls, they may go down easy, but if you're dealing with stone walls, that takes a lot of time. So siege towers, siege towers can be very, very effective there. Now, historically, siege towers have been able to help your units bypass over one layer of walls. So let's go ahead, take a look at that right here. And we're just gonna go ahead, click into this little area, and what do we see? All right, we're getting some units in, right? Not every unit there. And our little villager goes down there. Now we're gonna break out here. So that's the way the siege tower has historically functioned. So let's go ahead now and the new balance patch is supposed it seems right through some testing people have noticed that this is actually changing things a bit and now we're able to bypass multiple layers so let's go ahead take a look at that in action okay well that didn't do it all right might be a little buggy there let's see can we can we hop in over here all right well looky there so again now something to keep in mind though the first time we tried it was a little buggy it actually uh, doesn't surprise me that there may be some bugs with some things in the april update here just because they're probably working out some kinks so come on guys get in there all right so we just saw though we were able to get units over two layers of palisades can we go for a third well let's try it all right he just wants to go around Come on now, can we do it? Not seeing it so far. Well, just trying to find a way. Ooh, interesting, right? So that was a little buggy. That took a bit of time actually in order to get there. So again, it looks like there's probably still some bugs here, but we were able to do it eventually. That's something that's very much worth keeping in mind. Now, one of the things you typically see when players are walling is players tend to put houses behind their walls. Right? Fairly common thing you see. And this is very common on maps like Arena where you have stone walls up. And, you know, one of the things you want to see is, hey, you know, let's put a house behind it, right? That way you keep people from being able to siege tower in. So let's see, right? We have a little villager in here. Let's see if we can find ourselves a way in. This base. Is, are the houses going to be able to keep us out? We're running around. Looks like we're running around a good bit here. And, well, as you can see, we managed to get ourselves in. So even these houses didn't keep us out. Now, you might have noticed watching that is that the pathing was a little bit screwy there, right? So this might not be something that's fully fleshed out yet. Again, who knows what we'll see in the April patch. And one of the reasons that I want to show this, and maybe people like developers are already aware, but the point of the April patch is for us to be able to go in and find things a little screwy, a little buggy, because... The main reason that we're getting these preview patches is because we've had so many bugs that the developers have had to hot fix very quickly. It's been very stressful on everybody. And so if anybody out there is watching this, you saw what we did and there may be some siege tower bugs that still need to be worked out in terms of the pathing and getting people over multiple units. You'll notice that it searched a lot. We had to click into a place sometimes multiple times. I don't think these are very strangely organized bases or anything like that. So that's something to keep in mind. Okay, so, right, we have 
next a new DLC screenshot. Yes, so coinciding with Steam's winter sale of the game, uh, we've received a number of fragments of a screenshot that was taken from the new DLC. Those fragments have been assembled, and we also had a pretty cryptic tweet from the AOE Twitter account. And when the photos have finally been assembled together, they've been released, and uh, the developers have even released this high-resolution image, putting them all together, and uh, here you go, right? This is something of a a battle scene, it looks like, uh, that is... Looks like it's in the scenario editor, and there are a few things to take note up here. And so one of the things I want to do is go ahead and take a look, really kind of drill down in here, right? So if we take a look, right, I want to start in this southwest corner here. Now, what do we see? And again, there's a lot to look at here, but we see a few things. The first one, our red player, right, has elephant archers, castle age camel riders, trebuchets, right? This is all consistent with the Indian civilization. However, there's a few interesting things going on. The first one, we see battle elephants, right? This image suggests that Indians will have access to the battle elephant. Folks have been talking about this for a long time, and the, we can't be sure because this could just be from the scenario editor, and sometimes civilizations in the scenario editor will be given units they don't have access to as part of the civilization's tech tree, right? This might not be the case, but this at least is a suggestion. Now, we also see, right, a an infantry unit right here that is, looks to be a fella in a hurry on foot with a spear, and he's trying to get somewhere now, and that's very interesting. Um... You know, this image suggests some kind of fast-moving spear-armed unit. Very interesting idea, right? Looks a little like maybe even a halberdier or something. I don't know. Let's 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 uh, let's pl 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 place a pause on that and, and keep going through here because we also see another very interesting foot soldier next to this unit, armed with a disc, which uh, I've learned is a weapon called a chakram, and that's a projectile weapon. And you can actually see if you if you take a look right there is a a it looks like a chakram in flight a bit further to the north where these elephants appear to be engaged in some combat and so right the real question here is uh is this going to be a ranged melee unit along the lines of the gabedo or the throwing axeman or is this going to be a unit that's a bit more equivalent to say the incan slinger that would benefit from archery technologies now staying on elephants for a moment right we see some interesting elephants here in this image that have some kind of armor or fabric on them so actually in this one shot right we see elephant archers we see battle elephants that are much more reminiscent of the ones currently in the game and then these elephants that have even more armor on them and no rider so this is pretty interesting, right? I don't know quite exactly what to make of this, but we do have a number of elephant options, it seems. Um, it's unclear whether these more armored elephants are engaged in combat at all. This one might be attacking a stable, but I don't know. It's, it's, just, it's just really hard to say at this point, to be honest with you. Now, keep, as, as, we, as we keep going on this, right? It's worth noting here that the trebs in this, in this image uh, it doesn't appear that they have siege engineers, and the camel riders haven't been upgraded. Now, there's a few things. If this is, if our player in red here is the is the Indian civilization as we know it now, does it mean that they'll lose access to siege engineers, right? Something that's worth asking. And now the fact that the camel riders haven't been upgraded, what does that mean, right? I think it's very, very, very unlikely that they would go in such a different direction, that they would get rid of the the heavy camel rider and make them more like the cumans but it's possible right for instance and again what am i doing in this video i'm engaging in some baseless speculation it's all it's possible that perhaps what they're going to do is they might replace the heavy camel rider with the imperial camel rider right because it's costs a lot to get to that unit and maybe we'll just have that i don't know again i'm just speculating here uh i so 
all in all, when it comes to the Indians as we know them, I wouldn't rule out major changes to the civilization. Now, let me move up in this image just a bit. Actually, let me go a little bit further up. Okay, perfect. So now, moving up a little up into the right here, I want to take a look at what we see. Well, first of all, we see some stables and a barracks that use that beautiful Indian architecture, uh, which, you know, again, I mean, it's about... 100% certain, I would say, at this point, that, that we're going to see uh, a civ on South Asia look, splitting up the Indian, Indian civilizations on the continent, I would expect. Now, we also see this same chakram-wielding warrior, right, this foot soldier, on the teal side, right? Now, this suggests the possibility of another shared unit, though, again, unclear. Now... We also spy two units that we actually haven't seen in this picture before. The first appears to be a cavalry unit, right? Of a of a strapping young lad, uh, bare-chested with a circular shield and what looks like a short wooden spear with a long blade attached to it. Now, I bring up the physical appearance here not to drool over the manly physique of this brave warrior and suggest that you know, maybe I need to hit the gym later today, right? Do some crunches. But I want to note that it's very possible that this unit has some kind of light, maybe medium cavalry kind of role. After all, why go out of your way to give this unit virtually no armor and a small shield? Again, I'm making a prediction about what this unit's role is going to be. Now the second, the second thing that we see is a very subtle distinction with the elephant archer, right? If you take a look at the two elephant archers we see, we see that our teal player not only has access to the elephant archer that we're used to seeing, but there's also another elephant archer that is in, that has its rider, its archer mounted in a much less armored carriage, right? Now this raises some interesting questions. Is the elephant archer now going to be a shared unique unit that you can build from the archery range? Or, right, is this less armored version, right? Is it one that evolves into a more elite version? Is it separate altogether? Do perhaps just the Indian civilizations get access to this different kind of unit? Something that might be similar to, say, a lot of the Southeast Asian civilizations having battle elephants with the Persians having the war elephant. Again, these are all questions we might ask. And, you know, something to think about here is that in Age of Empires 1, the elephant archer is a sort of shared regional unit between, I believe, five civilizations. So we've seen in the past Age of Empires 3 having some influence on the development of Age of Empires 2, right? Flemish Revolution that the, the Burgundians use is uh, related, I believe, to the Minuteman technologies in Age 3. Might we be seeing something where some Age of Empires 1 principles are being brought over into the current game? Now, let me jump out of this for a second and go pan down to the right for a moment. Perfect. Okay. Now, if we pan down to the right here, we see some interesting things, right? We see, once again, our fast-running spear wielders in the red charging into, right, our possibly light cavalry-ish. And again, I'm not saying it's the scout line. I'm just saying it's a light cavalry type unit. We see these two these two fellas are in in battle here. Now this may be a subtle hint that the spear wielding infantry is going to have an anti cavalry sort of role, right? Maybe used as a sort of fast halberdier. We might also see this thinking that maybe the this this bare chested cavalry warrior uh, maybe it has an anti infantry role, right? It's kind of hard to say at this point. We just don't know. I would also say, right, note the presence of the teal barracks, right? This may be where our chakram units are being generated from. And if we pan up just a little bit more, right, Ooh, not that far, right, okay, that'll work. We see these two very interesting buildings, right? We have one in the south, one in the north. Okay, now let's stay in the south here for a moment. So... This appears to be a sort of regional castle. We can see some arrows that seem to be flying from the castle uh, toward uh, our red units here. It seems. It's actually, judging from the arrow, I wish I could zoom in a little bit more. 
but I'm I'm just I'm getting the sense here, right? That these are uh, that we can see these sort of flails on the end of the arrow, and the point is here. So I think that we do have those arrows coming from the castle. Now what's interesting here is if we take a look in the north, right? It doesn't appear that we have any arrows attacking these elephants here. So again trying to draw a few things out of it there's some interesting possibilities it could be that these red battle elephants are simply not within range of the castle which might mean that this teal sieve whatever it is right and the the url on this screenshot like released by the developers right says it's a bengali screenshot so i presume that our teal sieve are the bengalis this suggests that they might not have access to bracer right so um it's something to keep in mind right again if the civad bracer would they be able to reach these battle elephants i don't know it's hard to say without the tile mod being uh being on so those are the main things i think we can glean from this picture but are we done analyzing photos here <laughs> we're not done by a long shot <laughs> We also have a screenshot that was released looking at the the Dravidians. It, this is what it says. Now, so what are we seeing here? Well, let's actually go ahead and take a look just at this picture, right? Uh, we can see that it looks like we have a new ship design. Now, it based on its size, I would expect it to be a warship. But if I were going to make a prediction just of looking at it, I think this is actually going to be more of a melee style warship. We don't see if we could zoom in just a little bit here. I don't see any ports for any cannons or arrow slits, anything like that. And we do have in the bow of this ship a what it doesn't look like a sail to me, though it's kind of hard to tell. It might be a sort of battering tool. I'm not sure. I think that I'm still on the fence whether this is a a some kind of a battering ship or maybe it's some kind of a new transport ship because the fact that it does appear to have this little housing unit on top uh may indicate that it's used for transporting soldiers i don't know i'm i'm getting some transporty you know i don't want to say like marine warfare like boardings uh, sort of vibes like boarding other ships because it's just kind of hard for me to imagine how that will work in Age of Empires given the naval mechanics but I would expect this ship to be very different from the warships that we've that we've seen in the past now again we see these elephants in the pier again right we talked about those earlier but let's go up a little bit further right so we have two interesting things in this picture right in our green, we have, it looks like another unique infantry unit, right? Who's armed with a whip or some kind of flail-like weapon. Uh, we see elephant archers again, uh, suggesting once more that elephant archers are going to be moving to become a shared regional unit. And we also see a unit riding in a chariot. Now, again, this does harken a bit back to Age of Empires 1, where units were in chariots. And so, again, there seems to be something of a theme here. And, you know, we are, we are, we are starting to see some of that. Now, uh, just a few other things about this picture, right? It does appear that we have a, what looks like a unique trade cart, right? Um, it doesn't appear to be going to a market or anywhere. And we also have a light cavalry unit. So this civilization seems like they're going to have uh, the light cavalry line, uh, at least at a minimum. And so that wouldn't be that surprising though. It's worth noting the Teutons don't have it. And so, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty interesting setup that we have here. Now, if you think that we're done looking at pictures, again. You would be mistaken, right? So if you could take a look at this picture here, right? So this is something apparently that was also released by the developers. And I think that somebody actually put in the comparison with the huns uh the huns tech tree here and this is an image that's uh been on reddit as well and where this particular picture is taken from but the individual who posted it uh you know referenced the developers um and so yeah i'm just referencing where i got it from 
And the interesting thing to notice is that if you take a look at the Han tech tree here, right? That we have Scout Cavalry Bloodlines, and then this area is missing next to Bloodlines. But if you look up, it looks like there's a box there. Which suggests that one of these new civilizations is going to have something unique that they can research or train in Feudal Age. Now, I know over the years people have talked about the idea of maybe a Camel Scout. It's worth noting that if this tech tree is positioned in the same way, uh, it is hovering over the camel line, it might not necessarily be attached to the camel line. So just because, say you can make a kind of light scout, it's not necessary that you would be able to upgrade it into a camel rider. I think that would be really improbable because I don't know what you would do in terms of the cost of the unit. It, it seems very strange, but it is very possible that we are seeing some kind of possible camel scout or a light camel unit in feudal age it's also possible that this civilization has access to a technology in the feudal age that would do something to its stable units it's very hard to say at this point but well we are we are here to baselessly speculate now again if you think we're done here <laughs> Let's take a final look here at something that was that was posted by Dragonstar, and this is, I think, the most controversial. And I should be clear, I don't drag. I don't think this originates with Dragonstar, right? I think I'm not entirely sure where this originates from. I've heard rumors that somebody posted it on an account or a discord or something an instagram something like that that's linked to tato but again that's completely unfounded but what this appears to be right what this appears to be is the civilization attributes and bonuses and descriptions of four civilizations right um so look before i jump into this i actually got to say i kind of don't like talking about this one i mean this is already out there. It's all over the forums and Reddit. And honestly, it's really possible that it's a fake or a hoax. And I'm going to talk about that. And I don't really know what to do with it. And I want to say a few things. I think that hacking, stealing info or data, any of that kind of thing, it's not cool. Even if it's benign and it doesn't have any ill intentions, I really think the digital era we live in has forced us all to confront challenges to privacy that we ought to take seriously and responsibly. And so... If this leak somehow originated by sort of ill-gotten means, I don't think we should do anything to encourage that. Now, I gotta say, I have not heard that this leak was acquired in any such a way. And I think that that's also really important to emphasize because we live in a world where, leak, where leaks are often done on purpose. Someone's got a story, they wanna get out there, generate some interest, some buzz in, a, in their brand. Something like that. Get that rumor mill a churning. Leaks create intrigue and attention and excitement. Hey, that's good for business. And sometimes you leak things to purposely throw people off in a different direction, right? Either one of those things could actually be possible for what's happened here. And like I said, I haven't heard anything about this image that's not above board. No rumors of any kinds of... Kinds of deceptiveness or anything like that and i will say that if somebody is trolling us with a hoax then all i gotta say is well done because if this is a hoax or a fake you have done a pretty pretty dang good job so in the end i think everybody's talking about it and because there doesn't appear to be anything untoward um, and i'm open to actually discussing it and this is based on speculation and i guess i'll just warn you up front that the speculation for this particular image is going to be very baseless. So consider yourselves uh, uh, primed for that. Now, what do we see here? We see four civilizations, right? We have the Hindustanis, the Kasharas, the Dravidians, right? And the Bengalis. Now, the real questions here is, are we dealing with a hoax? And honestly, I gotta say, I'm not sure. On the one hand, 
This is a fake, it's a dang good one, and the unique units that are in the images are very consistent as to what we've seen so far. But there's also some real questions about the validity of what we're seeing, and let me run through a few of those. The first is that the images that we've seen so far that have been released by the developers strongly suggest the Elephant Archer is going to be a shared unit. And the Hindustani, right? The Hindustani characteristics seem to be basically the Indians, but with a different name, right? Because again, it looks like we're splitting the Indians up into multiple sieves. And this seems like the Indians that we know and have now in the game are going to have their name changed to the Hindustanis. Now, this particular list of attributes says they have the, ele the they have elephant archers as a unique unit. But what's interesting here is that the Gujaras also refer to elephant archers and the Dravidians also refer to elephant archers, but they don't have them in the tech tree. And more importantly, the Hindustanis, we don't have the elephant archers anywhere in this tech tree. So this is an inconsistency that suggests that something is up. Plus, there seems to be a watermark on the Hindustani card that is a, a bit suspicious. I'm not exactly sure what it means, but I should say all of these cards that are kind of compiled together, you can notice, right? They don't fit perfectly in a line or anything like that. And so it's a bit odd. Um, now, staying on the Hindustani here, because there's a lot of issues with this particular card, it actually doesn't mention the unique unit for which it has a picture, right? This spear-wielding infantry warrior who was, you know, like hustling around in the previous screen, one of the previous screenshots, right? Right? It, we have a picture of a unique unit, but we don't have one listed. And that's a bit strange. Additionally, right, the Camel and Cavalry Archer Civ description uses an ampersand, right? Uh, whereas the other ones spell out the word and. So again, that's a little suspicious too. And something else that's really, really interesting here is that the Hindustanis, right, if they are the prior Indians here, they're referred to as a camel and cavalry archer sieve. And yet there's a few things with this. I don't see any cavalry archer bonuses, do you? And if it's being referred to, right, as a cavalry archer sieve because it has the elephant archer, well, then all of these civilizations should be referred to as cavalry archer sieves because it seems like that's going to be, based on the descriptions, a shared unit. So something is going on here. Now... What's also interesting about the Hindustanis here is that if this is true that they're a camel and cavalry archer sieve, then that would actually change their billing from that, it will, from what they currently are, which is a camel and gunpowder civilization, mainly because they have access to the Shiktani, the, or the Shatagni tech, I don't know how to pronounce it, that gives their hand cannoneers extra range. Um, but from what we see, nothing appears to have changed, and yet somehow it's gone from gunpowder to cavalry archers. So... What does that mean? Well, we could see a change to Shatagni as a tech, right? Maybe it's something else. Um, maybe there's a cavalry archer bonus that hasn't been added to the sieve. Maybe Shatagni could become a regular bonus or removed completely. I don't know. It's a bit, it's a bit mysterious at this point. And I got to say, though, I would really like to see Indians, based on the way that they're currently played, get a Cav Archer bonus, because honestly, without the Nightline and without Arbalus, you're almost always forced into playing Cavalry Archers, and the Civ, I think, really needs some help there if you're going to be funneled in that direction. So I personally would really take a Cav Archer bonus, but hey, uh, you know, there's a lot of questionable indicators here in this particular, this particular listing. And the next thing I'd say... I just think some of the bonuses here are freaking nuts. Take the Kajaras for an, for example, right? So the Kajaras have three unique units, a food cost discount, a team bonus that increases the training speeds of camels and elephant, which sounds like it's the these are, these are, these are units that they're relying upon. 
Uh, they get extra melee armor and an extra bonus damage to mounted units. So presumably, like, the camels here are going to be insane. Um, that's a lot. We've seen a lot of regeneration bonuses here. And that's kind of suspicious to me, right? It suggests that maybe somebody who likes the concept of regeneration, putting it in, uh, because it would get a lot of attention. I don't think regeneration bonuses are actually, thus far, have actually been all that game-changing in the game just because so much damage is dealt uh, during fights and there's not a lot of time for it to apply. So I, I could see that being the case that we have these regeneration bonuses. There's just one too many and it just kind of, that just kind of raises a red flag. Now, also, let's take a look, right? If we go look down here at the Bengalis, right? We see our individual here who appears to be on a chariot and that's something that's worth noting is the unique units in the pictures really seem to for the most part be in this in this image as well we have bengali elephants resisting conversion and negating bonus damage and you can research a tech that allows them to attack faster i mean what do you counter this unit with and they're spawning two additional villagers when you get to the next age now i think that seems that first of all that's a great bonus it's still not as good as the Chinese bonus because with the Chinese during the transition, you're getting that extra work time, right? If you can have that build down. But again, with the Chinese, like that's a build you really have to work at to make efficient. This is getting two additional villagers for free. Whew. That's a, uh, that's a bit, that's a bit, sus that's a bit suspicious to me. It could be insane. I mean, imagine if you have four or five town centers. I mean, if, you're if each town center is getting two villagers, boom, that's an extra 10. That seems... That seems wild. Um, also, taking a look at the Dravidians, right? Dravidian skirms attacking 25% faster? That's pretty crazy. Thumb ring increases archer firing speed by like 18%. Um, God, you better hope that that civilization is missing bracer or some armor upgrades, because... That would be insane, especially in feudal age. Uh, so I don't know. Th these are some... Now, look, having crazy overpowered bonuses in the game is in some ways consistent with the release of a new DLC. So um, I don't think that that is really, you know, evidence that this has to be a fake. I'm just saying... Some of the bonuses are pretty nuts. So, what's the verdict here is the ultimate question. And, while there are some major issues, I highly doubt this is 100% accurate. I think it's also hard to believe that this is a genuine fake, based entirely on, like, on someone's intuition, because this is a lot of work to do very quickly and really get the graphics right, get the look of all this right. And so there's something to that. Now, part of the reason I also doubt that this is entirely fake is for this reason. Many of the major content creators out there, guys like T90, Ornlu, Viper, and many others have been radio silent on a lot of this. And I'm going to draw your attention to you know somebody who i probably you know was conceived in the fashion of sherlock holmes if you've read any sherlock holmes mystery you may be familiar with the phrase the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime from the story the adventure of silver blaze now to make a long story short or maybe a short story even shorter one of the lessons in this Sherlock Holmes mystery is sometimes when we expect something to happen and it doesn't happen, that allows us to make useful deductions about what's actually going on. Now, given how connected some of the sort of more, I think, more esteemed figures in the Age of Empires community are, given how much they're connected to, to the scene and things that are being discussed, etc., there are probably a lot of, there are probably things that they know, but they are not supposed to say or talk about. And so putting out information or even addressing information like this is probably the last thing that any one of them would want to do, right? Because you wouldn't want to risk saying something 
that you've agreed not to reveal, right? That makes a lot of sense. It's like how actors go on uh, uh, publicity circuits when a movie comes out and there's things that they can't say about the film, right? It's kind of like that. So, so they might not know everything, but there still may be things that they know that are not supposed to get out. So the fact that the fact that nobody's saying nothing suggests to me that some people know some things, right? That that are out there, and so maybe nobody wants to comment on this, which again, right, suggests that you know maybe at least portions of this have some validity and given how accurate the unique units are it seems that would seem to be the case to me uh, i doubt though highly that it's 100 percent accurate i'll keep restating that and again even when the developers have officially released certain civ attributes and things like that oftentimes we get to the game and they're tweaked or modified now fortunately for you all i have no connection to the developers at all i'm a true man of the people and that means you are all fortunate enough to have access to my dementia whenever you want to pull up YouTube. So my guess would be, right, that some leaks are maybe based on some incomplete data. I feel particularly that way, perhaps about the Hintistanis here. Um, but at the same time, things are falling into place a little bit too conveniently. And so it wouldn't surprise me if some of this is true. Now, so in the end, right, um, you know, this is a summary of like where we are right now. There are definitely some suggestions that this saga of receiving information is not over and that we'll actually get a dlc announcement sometime in the near future like i said i i would project that to be the case personally based on just the way that we've seen the april update preview play out and the fact that all of this is kind of happening at once um, I, I would expect we'd hear something recently so the saga is probably not over and we're strapped in so you know if you I hope you've enjoyed taking a break from the ladder, right? Listen to this video. And if you, hey, if you have an idea in the comment section, you've seen something, you thought about something, share it in the comment section below. Like the video, follow the channel. We're going to be keeping that hype chick rolling, the uh, that, old, that old hype train rolling, right? And uh, I'll see you guys out there on the ladder. Peace.